12. Now, um, uh, we can, you can flip the coin and see which committee goes first. And then the second, following the lunch, the second committee starts from 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock p.m. And then the final details will be sent to the study, co study committee members in the coming weeks on what we're going to be doing, and including your emails, contact numbers, how to get in touch with you, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, any questions with regards to these assignments of the subcommittee for the transportation study committee and the development authority subcommittee? Any questions? Okay. I don't need a motion in a second to go forward because you're already committed, so we're going to move forward, okay? <laughs> Unless there's a, a, a parliamentary to rule that I must do that. Maybe you are good. Hearing none, okay. Now, let's go ahead now. You should also have in your package now is our 2014 platform issues. This is also important to us. Sean, I'm going to turn it back on to Sean in a few seconds. You should have some outline changes, what is in this, in this platform policy, what needs, what needs to stay, what needs to come out, or what needs to be expanded upon. Okay? Sean, I'll turn it back over to you. And actually, I, don't worry, yours, yours is a clean copy. Uh, yours is the actual current platform that we've operated on from 2013 to 2014 with the amendments from 2014. Uh, Chairman and I have a couple of, of note recommendations here uh, that I want to touch base on. But what we're going to do, since we have two meetings and we've got these two study committees that are largely going to determine many of our platform positions within this platform, uh, just wanted to really kind of briefly go through the platform, reminding the provisions we have in there, a couple of items that were taken care of and, and achieved. We'll let you know of that and, and a couple of big changes I want to put on your radar to consider as we go through the summer process because what we will do when we have this second meeting in August, we'll take the recommendations from the study committees uh, to, the full to this full body again and that's when we'll go through the recommendations piece by piece and vote on them individually. So no votes will be taken today as we mentioned earlier. This is just kind of a brief update on our platform. Uh, T-SPOS was mentioned earlier on, that's the first provision there on page two. Uh, and the way that provision currently reads, I'm just going to touch on it because I know it's important <coughs> to many folks. Um, this provision is, ha has been um, amended to reflect if a region desired to bring TSPOS back up for a vote, here's some of the ways where the membership felt would have a higher chance of success in, in passing. Some of the things that the original TL legislation didn't do that perhaps if it did, maybe some of these regions would consider bringing it back or passing it. And that's the current urging that we have with this position. There was a lot of uh, discussion about this at our regional meeting this past Wednesday, and there were some legislators there, and a lot of them seem to be leaning toward this, bringing it back. There, I mean, I, I, my understanding is any conversation that I've had in the transportation arena recently, there, there's a lot of effort to protect and preserve those regions that currently have TSPLOS, and preserve the option for regions who may want to bring it back. There are some regions who have loosely started having a conversation about whether or not it's something they want to bring uh, back and give it a shot. And I think if some of those regions do, I have a feeling there's a, there's a chance of success. And they're looking at the three regions, seven, eight, nine, that did pass it, seeing what they've done with it and seeing the local 25% share that's coming in. And, and they're, they're looking at that and saying, hey, perhaps we should give this another try. So from an association standpoint, from a full membership you know, of 159 counties, we, we do think, hey, this is a tool in the toolbox for transportation funding that you have the option of doing at the local level. And we want to preserve that and set it up for success. And so that's what this platform potentially does. And I'm sure that will be a part of any further conversation we have in the study committee. A group of us rode through a couple of those regions that passed it. They, they're doing some road work. They are, and I, I mean, the last report that I heard from GDOT, the revenues were down just a little bit, but nothing significant, but that is something they're paying close attention to, and as we have reports from them, we'll continue to, to pass those along to you all so you know, you know where you stand. Um, it, it, it is. Uh, transportation funding, we're going to turn to page three here. This is where I mentioned earlier, we had two provisions in our previous platform that we took out uh, under the understanding that there, if we're complaining about motor fuel tax revenues going down. Perhaps we should look at some other funding solutions and, and move away from our 
dependency on the motor fuel tax. Uh, with that said, there is a further conversation starting to be had of saying, hey, we understand motor fuel tax isn't maybe the answer long term, but it needs to be per perhaps a part of the solution, uh, especially as we transition until we find other ideas. And so one of the things that we'll look at is adding the state motor fuel tax increase provision back into the platform and a local option motor fuel tax back into the platform. And that'll be discussed and we'll have it basically take the prior draft provisions uh, from an old platform, present them to you in the second meeting, set something to keep on the radar uh, and, and to think about there. Um, also, motor fuel excise tax exemption at the bottom of page three, that's something that was added last session, uh, largely because the school boards managed to get an exemption on their vehicles from the, the, local, motor, the local motor fuel, or the motor fuel excise tax. And we went back to the General Assembly this year and tried to say, hey, if you're going to give the school boards, how about the county governments as well? I mean, we're, we're, we're county too. And many of them, actually some of the leaders in the transportation arena voted against that bill for the school boards. So they had no desire to push it. And many of them kind of wish they hadn't done it. And we're, you know, if there was an easier way to repeal it, they probably would seek a way to repeal it, but they know that's not a fight. So there's not a lot of appetite there. Uh, so that's something for the membership to, to, to consider how important is that to you? Is it something you want us to spend political capital on? Or um, if it's something that we should maybe leave in here to help them understand as long as the school boards get it, perhaps they should consider us getting it um, or, or, or take out. So just want to put that on your radar. Uh, yeah, and actually under transportation funding, as I mentioned earlier, the voluntary regionalism platform position you see there, that's the multi-jurisdictional SPLOS concept that I mentioned. We'll probably propose to, to change the terminology there. Uh, just so it's consistent with whatever conversations being had in the larger joint study committee over the course of the summer. Let's, see. Let's go on to page six. Wow. I'm actually going to hit up page five here real quick. Uh, on page five, workforce development, I actually met with Brett Lacey, who's the director of the Rapid Response division of work department or workforce development under the economic development the economic development department or commission whatever you want to call them uh, GDEC is how I attempt to refer to them and workforce development and you had the, you had the workforce investment act on the federal level we had some modifications to that last year that changed this department's been moved from the Department of Labor to the governor's office of workforce development now it's got a connection into the Georgia Department of Economic Development and he reached out to us, and I, I'm bringing this up because what they're seeking to do is really get out into the community, this rapid response division especially, and, and build some relationships with their local governments. The rapid response division, what they do, what they look for, is they really focus on mass layoffs and things of that nature and, and helping to preserve those jobs and, and train people to be able to get back on their feet again and find another job. That is the sole purpose. They are fully funded through the Workforce Investment Act and federal grants. It's been around a long time, uh, but they're really trying to ramp it up. He reached out to ACCG because he wants to find a way to get into the communities and be able to have those conversations. Their goal is to really help you to determine, uh, to be able to see on the front end where these, where these possibilities might occur. He mentioned uh, down, I think, in Lyons, Georgia, uh, a, a guy down there decided to automate or uh, many of his manufacturing operations. He was going to essentially fire his entire workforce. Uh, the Rapid Response Division came in and talked to him, and they have some incentives that they can provide to the businesses to say, hey, rather than going and getting a whole new workforce, you buy all the equipment and get it in here. Let us train the workforce that you have. And so that's what they did. They're in the process now of training this workforce. The guy's retaining the entire workforce. And because of their advanced training, they're actually getting advanced pay. So their pay is going up too. So this division helped them keep their jobs and helped them get a wage increase along with an added skill. So that's, a, that's an example of what they can do. That's a big example, but they've also got smaller examples as well. So I think it's a great resource for us, something to keep on your radar. Workforce is obviously a key component in economic development, uh, both on the prospect side and on the state and local government side. So although I don't have any specific changes there, I do want to put that on your radar and let you know it's a part of our platform. Yes, Jim. As well as this being a part of our platform here, this is a very important platform. Also, your regional commissions. Also, your MPOs, your regional commissions. Uh, you might want to also consider those individuals because they, too, are working on those 
of workforce development along with the DCAs. So this is an opportunity for Georgia to get to change our direction, uh, change our skill sets, because what we do know, we talk to corporations, the soft skills, what they're looking for is going to require those technical skills because everything is now becoming more animated and more digital. So those soft skills, electronics, heat and air condition, welding, automa all those new skills programmed to require high technology now because robotics. So work with your, your regional commissions as well as on this particular platform issue as well. So keep that open mind for that process as well. Question. Uh, moving on to page six, Georgia Transportation Infrastructure Bank. We're actually, we always enjoy being able to say when we've achieved something as a membership. And uh, thanks to efforts far greater than ours, uh, that last line on the Georgia Transportation Infrastructure Bank where it asks that counties should be eligible for all forms of financial assistance offered by the GTIB. Previously, you were, a bit, you were eligible for the low interest loan program of the Georgia Transportation Infrastructure Bank, but not the grant side. Only CIDs are really eligible for the grants. Well, prior to this last round of applications, they actually opened up the grant program to local governments as well. And uh, being one of the members of the, of the review committee, for, for these applications, there are quite a few city and county local governments who applied for the grants uh, for some of these projects. And you know, although final awards haven't been done yet, they're, they're looking at uh, another meeting still, I think you're going to see uh, the fruits of this by some of these local governments receiving awards on the grant side, not just the loan side. And I think that's important because what that does is it opens a program up on the grant side that was largely limited to Metro Atlanta and maybe a few other key metro areas around the state for CIDs now opens up to the entire state. Uh, and so with that, we can strike that and we'll recommend striking that in the, in the final committee because we've achieved that. The, the Transportation Infrastructure Bank, not only is it open to local governments now on the grant side, but they've also added additional funding both in, in 20. 2014 and FY 2015, it's roughly 10 million a year of additional funding uh, for this program so that they can make more awards. Uh, so just wanted to put that on your radar. What page was that, on? that was the top of page six. Okay. Page seven, the Georgia Ports deepening. Uh, we got the report from Commissioner Farrell uh, earlier in the meeting as to where we are with that and the state and the governor, uh, even, even the mayor of Atlanta has been uh, wholly committed as with many others around the state, to, the, to this project on the state level, understanding the importance that it, it is for moving commerce and ec improving economic development in Georgia. Uh, the federal side is where we've got the biggest issue. They've thrown some placeholder dollars into that line item up there, but nothing that can get the job done. The WARDA bill, Water Resources Development Act, was uh, recently, I believe it's sent to the, the president's desk to be signed if it hasn't been signed already, and it includes uh, some of the language in there necessary to kind of get the administration moving on actually appropriating those funds. Uh, so it is another step in that direction. Uh, what we'll probably want to do here, make a recommendation for in the second committee meeting, and I want this for you to think about this, is adjusting this position to speak more towards where we need the urging to occur, uh, and which would be with the federal government. And we can take that platform position to our federal policy committee as well for them to have it as a part of their uh, platform. But the state is committed, so I think we can tweak this to basically thank the, the state and encourage their continued commitment. But being that the state is on board as it pertains to funding this deepening, I think it's important that we focus this position a little more on those who need that urging. Uh, and so we may look to provide some draft language for that uh, for the second meeting. That's all I really have from an, an updated recommendation on the platform. We didn't want to take you through each individual item. Uh, anybody have any questions on items that they've seen while breezing through the platform that they'd want to discuss briefly? Sean, I believe that GTIB was on the clean version. It was not. Um, That's what Walker was referring to. There's my page six. You might have gotten an old. It is, sorry, for yours, my pages are slightly off. It was at the bottom of page five is the Georgia Transportation Infrastructure Bank. Uh, the additions I added to mine moved the pages. I apologize for that. <laughs> Did everybody get that? The, the, the Transportation infra bank, infra Infrastructure Bank is on page five on the clean sheet. 
do our editing on some things. Ours moved to page six, mine's and Sean's. Okay, Sean, thanks so very much. Appreciate your update. Yes, yeah, yeah, Billy. I, I do I do have one quick announcement before I turn it back over to the chairman. You have a sheet in here with the GDOT logo on top. This is a survey. It's the GDOT strategic, statewide strategic transportation plan survey. If you were at our annual conference and attended the transportation session, you heard GDOT's plan director, Toby Carr, uh, speak a little bit to this survey. I will say, we had put that link out there about three or four weeks leading up to the Centennial Conference, and we had zero responses. And so what we did, yes, zero responses. And they were hoping to have those results in time to be able to present that to us during, during the conference. So what we did is I worked with, with Toby and Kelly Gwynn over there at GDOT on this issue, and we put that link back out there on our main page after conference. Thanks to Enos and F and making that happen because I would not know how to do it if I tried. And we received, I got a response from Kelly Gwynn a week ago and we have over 100 responses. So for any of those of you who happened to click on that link and respond to this survey already, thank you. For those of you who have not, being a member of our Transportation Economic Development Committee, I believe that is a part of the duty uh, to be able to provide our feedback. This is where GDOT is looking for our feedback on our statewide transportation plan, the change they're going to make, so that they can really bring local governments into this process. So I think it's important that we provide that feedback to them and help them out. So if you have not already done so, please take some time, maybe over the lunch, uh, what have you, to, to, to fill this out. It shouldn't take you very long. We can turn it in at the back, and I'll make sure that they get that at GDOT to add to those 100 responses so we can have a good sample for them and we'll make sure that the results get out to you and any information and updates they have uh, regard, based on the results of the survey will we'll come to you in due time over the summer. That, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Uh, with that said, uh, we're running right on time here. We're scheduled to go to lunch around and to adjourn. But before we do that, I want to first of all thank uh, Houston County for hosting and the Cooperative Extension for hosting us today here, uh, allowed us to come to this beautiful town. And secondly, I want to remind everyone that uh, we will be following back up with you, the committee members, subcommittee members, for the Transportation and the Development Authority Committees. And remember, we'll send the information out to you that the uh, study committees will be meeting on June the 19th here in Macon, uh, location to be determined. I'm going to suggest that the Transportation Subcommittee uh, meet from 10 a.m. to 12 noon. And then shortly there following the second, after lunch, I'm going to recommend and suggest that the Development Authority meeting meet from 1 o'clock to 3 o'clock p.m. And so we want to try to connect with you before that time so that you can be prepared when you come into those meetings, those subcommittee meetings, with enough information to make it productive for you. If it takes you 30 minutes to get done, then that's fine. It takes you two hours, but we really want you to come out here with some good thoughts so we can get that turned in. So we come back to our August meeting, our final meeting in August, that we will be able to take our platform concerns and issues and opportunities and present them to us because I got to go before the policy, the Board of Governors, Board of Managers, and Scott and I, and we have to present that. And then following that, then they make their recommendation suggestion. And then at our fall meeting, the full body votes on our policy committees along with the other policy committees. So that's our direction for the day. Is there any other comments? Scott? Sean, also, in regards to the 100 years, uh, we have some Coke, bottles of Coca-Cola's over here. Please grab a couple of those bottles, what it says 100 years. It's, it's, a savvy, it's a saver, keeper. And if there's no further comments, yes, Enos?